As a 1.85 meter tall handsome man, a professional singer, the future superstar, I perform in a bar all year round, with a two-digit number of fans, yet fate didn't favor me, and I ended up being a driver for someone, it's a blasphemy to talent, an insult to greatness, as the saying goes, it's better to kill than to insult. I was about to turn around and leave, but I saw her coming towards me in black silk stockings. Her loveliness and gentle manners were irresistible. Her smile was as sweet as a spring breeze. This is indeed a test for a hero and a forging for real men. Boss, please get in. From today onwards, I am the racing legend of MT, Akina, a professional racing driver. I am full of confidence. I swore to show her what a real old driver is like. Throttle, start, bang, it crashed. Just when I was anxious and didn't know how to explain to the boss, I heard her say from the back seat, take off your clothes. My cousin told me that his wife had given birth to triplets and he wanted to take a month's paternity leave, asking me to take his shift. This is so rare. I thought it was some godly job, but it turned out to be a driver for the boss. Seeing the disdain on my face, my cousin laughed. You don't understand the joy of being an uncle. The work is light, the pay is high, and it's relaxing. You just graduated from college, don't you think job hunting is easy? He leaned over and said with a smile, the boss is a beautiful woman, over 30 and still single. I chuckled and said, not wanting to say more, over 30 and still single, how pretty could she be? The next day, I stood next to that Maybach and watched the moving black stockings. This figure, this face, this temperament, it can be called endless charm. Only then did I know that a young girl is not a treasure, my heart beats fast and my blood rushes. She walked over to me, lightly touched the hair by her ear, and said with a smile, you must be George, right? I'm troubling you. She handed me the car keys. My cousin had told me that the boss's name was Willow, the CFO of Hekazi Benlu. John Chen said your driving skills are good. He insisted on recommending you. She sat in the back seat, holding a cup of coffee in her hand, browsing the itinerary for the day. Zhang Chen is my cousin, who told me yesterday that he had worked hard for the company to agree to let me try work for a day. If the boss was satisfied, I could stay. At that time, I laughed, there's a trial, was my title of car god of Shizi Men a joke, but at this moment, I cursed Zhang in my heart for not telling me what car it was. Touching this luxury car worth millions, my heart trembled, my legs trembled, and then, I rear-ended it, after the abrupt break, there was a bang sound. The guy in front got off the car and started speaking curses. I kept on apologizing, my entire head buzzing. George, Willow called me, we're at fault completely. Take a picture, leave a phone number, we'll deal with it later. I'm running late. After I managed things and got back into the car, I turned around to see a large coffee stain on her beautiful silk shirt. There was also a puddle of coffee on the car floor. The corner of my mouth twitched, I'm sorry. She just glanced at me. Take off your clothes. Her voice was calm without any ripples. I jerk up my head, staring at her in shock. Was this okay for the first meeting? She looked somewhat speechless. There's no time left. My meeting today is very important. And I can't just attend it like this, right? Take off your white shirt and give it to me. Only then did I understand her meaning. And at the same time, my face turned red from my impure thoughts. And I hurriedly took off my shirt to give it to her. Fortunately, my Uncle John reminded me to dress more formally, so I wore a shirt. After handing the clothes to her, the partition within the car rose, she was changing in the back. Her voice was very soft, my eyes had nowhere to rest, even my breathing unconsciously became lighter. After she changed her clothes, I started the car again. In order to salvage the trampled face of the car god, I took a deep breath to stabilize my mind, then floored the accelerator and sped along changing lanes to overtake, accelerating, and going away with confidence. I must say, the performance of a luxury car is indeed excellent. With super powerful horsepower, I got her to her destination 10 minutes ahead of schedule. Won't she concede now? After she got off the car, she took a deep breath, then gave me a complicated look. I feel like this expression is somehow wrong. She spoke. George, could you go to Hermes later for me? by a piece of clothing the same as this one. As she said it, her eyes swept over my undershirt. Buy a set of clothes for yourself too. She handed me a black card. There's no password. I took the credit card and looked at myself suspiciously. At this look, 
I almost had a heart attack. Goodness, a large hole in the armpit. I pondered for 10 minutes at the door of Hermes. Should I go in wearing this shirt with a hole in the armpit? Or should I take it off and go in bare chested? The former might earn me scorn at most, while the latter might get me thrown in jail. I guess it is still better to wear it. As soon as I entered, a beautiful saleswoman came up to me. Are you Mr. George? Hello. Willow told me about you. Come with me to the VIP room. Even though I was wearing something odd, she didn't hesitate in the slightest. True to the salesmanship of top luxury products, they are professional and generally don't laugh. Willow's piece is out of stock. Why don't you pick something else? She pulled over a rack of clothes. I was somewhat troubled. But Willow was in a meeting now, and it wasn't convenient to call her. With the urgency of the situation, if I don't buy for her, won't she always be stuck with my clothes? I immediately started looking, and therein, I saw a light green dress. It exudes a fresh breath, just like a piece of lush lotus leaf. The soft light permeates through its wings as thin as the wings, just like the breeze sweeping through mountains and rivers, incomparably ethereal. It is a smooth and figure-hugging dress. Browsing this dress, I seemed to see the figure of Willa. It felt that she would look extra charming in it. I decided right away, this one. She had already taken it down and matched it with other clothes before I could finish speaking, then took me to look at menswear, and also picked it from head to toe. The entirely new me in the mirror made me exclaim, quite handsome, this is the real me. I was very satisfied, and suddenly thought that it's just a sets of clothes. I can afford this small expense. As the saying goes, no gains without pains, I made such a big mistake. This could be considered as an apology gift for her. I immediately took out my credit card with a pretty, upright, and dignifying image. I waved and said, check out, she said with a smile. It's a total of 172,000 yuan. I nearly pulled the card that already reached her hand back, chuckled, and thought, no merits also have hard work. Then, I took out the black card of Willow. She looked at me with a smile, and then handed the things to me. After buying things, she sent me out, still a standard smile that no faults can be picked. But, I always felt weird somewhere but couldn't tell where. After getting back to the car, I suddenly patted my thigh. Damn it, that was the look at a kept man. I drove back to the office building, waited until off work, and saw Willow walking out of the building. I quickly grabbed the clothes and went over. Miss Willow, your clothes are out of stock, I picked these especially for you. She took the clothes, looked at them, and a subtle smile appeared at the corner of her mouth. Thank you. Then wait a moment. I will change my clothes and give them back to you. As I was waiting by the car, I saw a light green figure slowly walking towards me. It was like a summer breeze suddenly passing through. Her figure light and graceful, the hem of her dress swaying in the wind. The slim fitting long dress outlined her figure. Her steps were brisk and steady. Each step seemed to step on my heart. My heart was pounding dot dot on the way home. We were both silent. She was looking at the contract. I was watching her in the rearview mirror. Miss Willow, I will pay you back the money for the clothes. There's no need. Consider it as a reward for using your clothes. She didn't look up. Her answer made me feel a bit uncomfortable. My clothes are not so valuable. Besides, you have to change clothes because I crashed the car. She made a sound to acknowledge didn't continue the conversation, and didn't even look at me. Don't you care? Her reaction was to calm. Her eyes didn't leave the contract, flatly asking, can you afford to pay? Embarrassedly I smiled, compensate, can't afford it. Having a sense of responsibility is a good thing, but whether you can take it is another matter. People should make promises within what they can do. As if she thought of something, suddenly began to lecture, she continued, even if we give you a way out, why do you continue to ask what was clearly implied? What do you want me to say? Her stern tone made the atmosphere in the car a bit awkward, like she was really angry. I unnaturally scratched my head, breaking out in a cold sweat, sweat drenching my back. The journey was silent, and when I got her home, she was on a conference call. I left the car keys in the car, signaled her, and quietly left, walking along the river. The wind was a bit chilly. I put on the shirt she had given back to me. A faint and almost inaudible fragrance was floating around. It was her scent, and it seemed that her warmth was still lingering on it. My ears inexplicably blushed. And then some regret arose in my heart. Today, after such an episode, she had said so. The work was definitely spoiled. She would definitely not agree to continue using mine. 
I couldn't help but sigh. Do you want some instant noodles? Seeing me lying on the bed, skipping dinner, and just staring at my phone, my roommate kicked me. I was too lazy to deal with him, so I turned my face to the wall and started thinking. At this moment, my phone suddenly rang, and I received a text message. George, you wouldn't be defeated by a minor setback, would you? In addition, whether the clothes are expensive or not is determined by the wearer. Its value is determined by me. And similarly, how much salary to give you is also up to me. Please pick me up at 7 o'clock in the morning. This woman is unusual. My roommate said he could always remember that night. Initially, I was almost drained, lying on the bed half dead. Suddenly, I seemed to receive some mysterious summons and jumped up, fully revitalized, laughing with my phone in hand. Hot. He doesn't understand anything. He's a million-year-old single dog with no love life. The next morning at 7 o'clock, I appeared next to the Maybach with high spirits. Willow smiled and handed me the car keys. After you left last night, I found out you had left the keys. Keep them. No need to return them. Her fingertips unintentionally grazed my palm. Bringing a numb sensation, I held the car keys along with the lawning tightly. She got into the car and started a remote video conference. I immediately kept quiet, driving the car in a calm and steady manner. The traffic on the third ring was terrible, and for over 10 minutes, we could not even pass a single street. I was extremely bored, so I connected my phone to the Bluetooth headset, intending to enjoy my own singing. But as soon as I pressed the play button, the sound came directly out of the car's Bluetooth speaker. As soon as my voice came out, I felt the whole air freeze, I was so scared that I couldn't stretch out my hand to turn it off, and I felt like my brain was split open. President Liu and everyone else in the video meeting suddenly became quiet, the car was still playing my howls, and I was in cold sweat, digging my toes into the floor. Damn it, it's like taking a dump in public, we're having a meeting, Willow said calmly. Her voice brought me back to reality. I regained control of my body, quickly turned off my phone. At that moment, I almost wanted to smash my phone. In my mind, I was thinking, I hope they can't tell it was me singing. Moments later, Willow ended the video call. It's pretty good. Her voice wafted from the back. Leave it on. My hands trembled. Having her listen to my singing was more suffocating than her asking me to take off my clothes yesterday. I could only comfort myself. I tuned it for so long. They should not be able to tell it's my song. I observed her carefully from the rearview mirror, but she looked normal. She actually seemed to be appreciating it. Unconsciously, my heartstrings were tugged. Suddenly, I felt pleased to have gained recognition, and the anxiety in my heart vanished with it. After getting her affirmation for the first time, I became bolder and bolder, always presenting new tunes I had written for her to hear. Looking forward to her occasional comments, it's like a child waiting for a reward. And she often compliments, the author is quite talented. I was surprised that she could always pick out the parts I put effort into, and could always select the parts I was most satisfied with. I discovered that her understanding of music was no less than mine. I was a student who graduated from the conservatory, but she only mentioned and that she learned to play the violin when she was young. I also began to look forward every day to our short exchanges on the road, as if I had found spiritual resonance or response of the soul. In just half a month, as a music major, I experienced the feeling of first love. My inspiration erupted. In order to have more topics to talk with her, I spend almost every night writing new songs, then eagerly waiting the next day to play them for her. Even though she never knew who the creator was, every comment she made sincerely touched my emotions. I could be happy to the point of insomnia over a remark she made, but I could also lose my appetite over a remark she made. No matter what I see or hear, the first thing I think about is her. And yet I dare not disturb her casually, I flip through her WeChat moments over and over again, until I almost got a carpal tunnel. The worst was Friday night, when I thought that I couldn't see her for two days on the weekend. I felt like I lost my soul, sighing deeply and heavily in the room. My roommate wished he could throw me, someone whose whole body was exuding the sour and rotten smell of love, out. And every morning, I resurrect with full health, cheerfully rushing towards my muse, that day, after dropping her off at the company, she told me that she had a dinner party that night and it would be late. I'll wait for you, I blurted out. After saying that, for no reason, my ears turned red. Her hand on the door paused slightly, 
Then she smiled at me and hummed and hummed before she left. It wasn't until I finished the new scores and rubbed my sore neck that I realized it was already 10 o'clock. Was her dinner party not over yet? Just as I returned the equipment to the trunk, I received a message on WeChat. George, come pick me up at the door. I quickly drove out. Just as I parked at the entrance, I saw her coming out, and there was also a man walking out with her. His figure was upright, his appearance outstanding, his attire tasteful. At a glance, you could tell he was the type of high-end elite man women liked. I recognized him. He was the big boss of our company, the president of Hecha Capital, Makoto. Willow seemed to have drunk, although she looked as usual. Her steps were slightly unstable. As she descended the stairs, her figure swayed. I rushed up, but a hand held me back. Makoto helped her faster than Anne looked back at me strangely. I'll take you home, he said to her. No need. George can take me. It's late. You should go back and rest too. Is he your new driver? He looked at me again and frowned. You drank tonight. I'm not at ease. Sit in my car and go back. I have something to talk to you. After he finished speaking, he glanced at me. You. Drive her car home. His eyes were filled with hostility. Willow couldn't see it. But he and I understood each other. In fact, I've heard about their relationship. Makoto and her are schoolmates. She is two years his junior. Three years ago. She returned to China to serve as the CFO of Hechat, becoming Makoto's subordinate. There were rumors in the company that Makoto had pursued her for a long time. It seemed that they had confirmed their romantic relationship between them, but hadn't made it public due to their work responsibilities. I didn't know the truth of these rumors, nor could I verify them. But now, watching them leave together, even their silhouettes complemented each other. Driving back, I never felt silence in this world so intensely, I couldn't help but wonder, did she really like Makoto's type, wealthy, handsome, high status, or regular in financial magazines, a life winner whom ordinary people dare not pursue? What woman wouldn't like that? I sighed, wanting to put on a song to break the silence but, after playing for a couple of seconds, I turned it off, she wasn't there. It seemed like even the melody was mocking my overconfidence. Yes. A woman as outstanding as her should indeed pair up with a more outstanding man. I feel like I've really been overestimating myself. The next day, when I went to pick her up, I didn't ask about last night, and she didn't say anything either. We seemed to be the same as before, yet we also seemed completely different. I would still make compositions for her to listen to, and I still looked forward to her response. Aside from this, I found there was nothing more to talk about with her nor any other things that could pique her interest. She is in a world different from mine. In this manner, I politely and silently continued to be her driver for half a month. My contract has expired. Tomorrow my uncle will come back to take over this job. On the last night, I sent her home. She asked me what are my future plans. I put on a light smile and said that I had found a job and could start working tomorrow. She stared at me and asked, Are you not planning to continue working here? I pursed my lips, feeling very complicated. On the one hand, I really wanted to stay by her side. On the other hand, it was extremely painful to see her and Makoto together. Then, I shook my head and said, no, I found a job that suits my career prospects better. I need to plan for the future, I can't be a driver all my life. Although it wasn't easy to notice, I saw a hint of disappointment in her eyes. She opened her mouth to say something, but finally nodded her head wishing me a bright future. It was terribly painful for me. The scene of our first meeting is still in front of me. At that time, I never thought I would fall so hopelessly, but I lost so quietly. My love hadn't even started yet, but it was over. Do you eat ramen or not? My roommate sees me lying on the bed again, in a more severe condition than last time, so he gives me a kick. Is your body drained again? What kind of job do you have? During the first half of the month, you're all day like you're on steroids. During the second half of the month, you feel like you're being sucked dry every day. I throw a pillow at him. Get lost. My phone rang. It was the bar owner urging me to go to work tonight. This month I've been working as her driver and my shift ends late, so I only go to the bar to sing on weekends. Now that the driver's job is over, the bar owner is urging me to go back. Well, I lost the roses. I can't lose the bread. When I'm singing on the stage, the bar owner watches me grimacing. As soon as I finished a song, he pulls me aside and scolds me. What the hell are you singing? Are you going to give me these sentimental sorrowful things again? Do you believe me if I tell you I'll make you regret it? Today is Saturday night. 
Don't you understand what happy night means? He is practically spitting in my face. I let him say whatever he wants. My aimlessly drifting to the entrance. I see a few stylish city girls coming in, laughing and talking. Suddenly I freeze. Is the woman in the middle willow? I'm hidden in the dark, so she doesn't see me. She's led directly to the second floor. I hear her familiar voice floating over. Did you come here to drink? Another woman laughs. Yes and no, you'll see. My heart suddenly rises up. This bar is pretty famous. Not because of the bar on the first floor, but because of the entertainment venue on the second floor, which is mainly served by pack waiters, accompanying you for drinks and games. Whatever table games, werewolf kill, script kill, whatever the guests want to play. Quite a few wealthy women like to consume here. Even though it's a decent place, a bunch of men and women drinking and laughing, who knows what will happen. Thinking about those men surrounding Willow, I felt a buzz in my head. I wanted to rush up. The bar owner stopped me by pulling me. Where are you going? I'm not singing anymore. I want to go upstairs. He gave me a once-over. Hum. Have you finally figured it out? Don't want to work hard anymore. I told you a long time ago, uh, with your long legs and good looks, you should be working upstairs. Just wait. I'll have Anna take you out. I can't wait. I shook him off and ran upstairs. As soon as I got upstairs, I bumped into Anna. I asked her hurriedly, where did the women who just came in go? You just in time, we still short of one person over there. She led me to the door, told the other waiters to take good care of me, and then let us in. My gaze swiftly swept around, and I saw Willow sitting in a corner, talking to her friends. When they saw us come in, their eyes all turned our way. At that moment, I suddenly panicked. I was just thinking about rushing just now. I didn't think about anything before I barged in. Now seeing her sitting quietly there, I suddenly realized I was screwed. Yeah, now I'm in a dilemma. Even jumping into the Yellow River wouldn't clear my name. Anna let us introduce ourselves. Whoever the elder sister like, the person would stay. When it was my turn, I felt my entire scalp numbed. I didn't even dare to look in Willow's direction. And I don't know what kind of expression she would have. Anna hurriedly introduced. This is a new one today. A bit shy. Sisters, please don't take it personally. Someone laughed and said, so cute. Come and sit with sister. I looked at her once. My steps didn't even dare to move. Anna was frantically gesturing at me. Hurry up. I think I want to die. I painstakingly moved a few steps toward that sides and suddenly heard Willow's icy voice. Wait. My body stiffened and I involuntarily looked her way. I saw her staring at me and said word by word. Come here. The air was silent for two seconds. Anna was just about to step in when the women burst into laughter. Well done, Wiley. So you like this type of guys? Ha. Huh. We thought you would get angry and leave when you found out. The woman who called me also urged me. Hurry up. Go and join her. Willow just looked at me, not saying a word. Although she's a bit cold, she has a very good disposition. I never saw her lose her temper or make an ugly face to anyone. But now, her eyes were extremely cold. I froze. A chill rose from the bottom of my heart. Her gaze was like a sharp blade, breaking through my forced smile. I almost needed all the courage in my life to dare to sit down next to her. The male waiters started to encourage everyone to play werewolf kill. After several rounds of games, they were drinking, singing, and messing around. And the atmosphere got increasingly heated. Willow and I sat in the corner of the sofa. They were too busy singing and didn't pay attention to us. Is this the job you found? She leaned against the back of the sofa and asked coldly, her voice resonating with a touch of weariness and resignation. No, I hurriedly explained. I'm here to sing. Just then, a high noted coming from there. I love you, but I can't say it. She glanced over and said flatly, You are indeed here for singing. Damn it. It's getting worse. No, I'm really. Just then, a woman stood up mumbling. Wiley has been not participating much since the beginning. That's not right. She needs a drink as punishment. She could not excuse away and had to pick up the drink in front of her. Just as she was about to drink. I snatched it away and gave them a smile. I'll drink it for you. Under the uproar of everyone, I drained the glass, feeling her somewhat surprised gaze. I also glanced at her. This is the first time. I have dared to look at her so directly. It must have been the drink just now. I put the glass back, my hand casually laying down, accidentally touching her hand that was on the sofa, 
my heart started beating suddenly. All my senses were instantly focused on the little finger that was touching hers. I should move my hand, but I delay. What confuses me is, she didn't move either. At this point, someone shouted, hey, that's too much, your eyes are intertwining. The uproar from everyone abruptly woke me up. I hurriedly averted my eyes and put my hand back on my lap. At this time, her phone lit up. I caught a glimpse of Okoto sending several messages in a row. My emotion suddenly rolled. Jealous mixed with loss. Do you want to call your boyfriend? No sooner had the words left my mouth, I regretted it. The insistent meaning in this sentence was too obvious. Normally, I would never dare to ask this. She looked at me, frowned. Her expression speechlessly seemed to say, Would you invite your girlfriend to a place like this to mess around? The corner of my mouth twitched. I was rash. But then, her voice low, a tone she has never had before. That voice seemed to come from far away, disappointment in it with a touch of excuses, she said. I've never had a boyfriend. I looked at her abruptly. I've heard the rumors in the company. They are so absurd that I don't even bother to refute. Makoto is my senior and my boss. As long as I'm in Hoki, we couldn't have anything more. My chaotic mind took a while to understand what she meant. She doesn't have a boyfriend. Makoto isn't her boyfriend. Countless fireworks suddenly exploded in my brain. It's like, brothers, I'm alive, everything is revive. My heart is about to jump out of my chest. I'm so excited that my hand is trembling a little. Those women saw that we were still talking and weren't happy. They poured two bottles of wine in front of us and demanded that we drink. I won't let her drink, so I stood up and blocked all the alcohol for her. It's amazing. The wine that was just as bitter and astringent as a broken heart is now all sweet. While I was dizzy, she suddenly stood up. There are some things to do in the company. I have to go back. I was a bit puzzled, staring at her in doubt. She stood up arched an eyebrow at me. Are you not leaving? Send to keep drinking. While sitting in her car waiting for the driver, I closed my eyes pretending to be drunk. But in my heart, I was overly glad it was Saturday and her chauffeur, who is my uncle, was off duty. Because I heard her ask, where do you live? I'll bring you home first. I closed my eyes tightly, frantically encouraging myself. Don't say it. George, you can do it. Resist. Don't dare say it even if it's going to kill you. After asking a few times, she sighed and told the chauffeur, go to the Fursee's mansion. Fursee's mansion, I couldn't be any more familiar with this name. It's the place where I pick her up and drop her off every day. I clenched my teeth trying to suppress my laughter. Suddenly, I sensed a light fragrance in my nose. My attention was captured. I opened my eyes slightly and saw her leaning over to buckle up my seatbelt. Her body gets closer to me until her delicate side face was only one palm away from me. I could almost hear her faint breathing. Her loose hair slid down my cheek and fell on my neck, disturbingly tingling my nerves. My back stiffened completely. My head buzzed. I almost lost control and hugged her. I pinched my thigh to calm myself down. Coming to her house, this was the first time. The first time, and I'll be staying overnight. I'm making progress. I was so excited. Countless exciting scenarios played out in my mind. Then, thinking about it, I fell asleep in the car. The next day, hearing some noise outside, I came out and saw Willow busying herself in the kitchen. She noticed me. Breakfast will be ready soon. Wait a moment. Then, she closed the kitchen door. I can actually have her cook breakfast. Even if I had been drinking until my stomach was bleeding last night, it's freaking worth it. Just as I was thinking to go and help, the doorbell rang. Wiley, are you there? I was stunned. Is this? Makoto's voice. Oh my, this early in the morning. If he sees me in her house, it'll be a huge misunderstanding. Then it hit me dot 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 big misunderstanding. I glanced at Willow. There was too much noise in the kitchen. She didn't hear. God be good. I hurriedly ran into the bathroom, took off my shirt, then sprinkled water over my body and head. Grabbed the towel while drying myself. I went to open the door, mumbling, coming. Makoto standing outside the door, saw me opening the door, and me who was obviously just fresh from shower. His pupils twitched violently. I pretended to be surprised. Boss Makoto, how did you get here? Is there something so early? How come you're here? Where's Willow? He pushed me aside and was about to walk in. I already knew he would do that, so I kept the door from opening with my foot, blocking him outside. 
Wiley's still not finished showering, so I came out first when I heard the doorbell. I chuckled. He was so mad his eyes were on fire. Get lost. What did you do to her? At this moment, Willow's voice came out. George, was that the doorbell ringing? I immediately reply. Oh yes, it's okay. You go ahead. Hum. She closed the door again. She's such an inspiration. I was holding back laughter until I almost went insane, facing Makoto whose face had turned green. I said, you heard it, boss Makoto, we're all adults here, a consensual relationship. By the way, do you want to come in and sit for a while? He was so mad that he pushed me aside and stormed off. I closed the door and nearly died of laughter, then turned around to see Willow standing there. Her expression was a bit awkward. Why did you take off your clothes? I hurriedly wiped the water off my body with the towel. I'm sweating. It's too hot. Ha ha. A gust of cold wind blew. I sneezed three times repeatedly. Her expression became even more complicated. Go get dressed. All right. Oh nine. At breakfast, she asked me. How much do you earn working there? I nearly spit out a mouthful of porridge. I coughed twice. Honestly replied. 53,000. She didn't say anything. But the look on her face made me feel. 53,000. Have you sold your soul and your body for this? No. I'm just singing at the bar. And yesterday I saw you. I hurriedly shut my mouth, nearly slipped up. Not sure if she's convinced. She was silent for a moment, then sigh. George, you shouldn't be wasting your time. I didn't let you go to see you doing these kinds of things. She looked straight at me, her eyes full of disappointment. I suddenly felt like being hit by smacks. My mood plummeted in an instant. She shook her head and stopped looking at me. Go after breakfast. My face was burning. Felt like my whole head was on fire. She's thoroughly disappointed in me, right? Shirking my duties, dogging in a manger for small gains, wasting my life. Perhaps, in her eyes, I am just like this. When I got home, I opened a live streaming platform that I haven't used for a long while. The first thing I saw was a message from a fan called Azmir who has been following me for three years now. At that time, I was quite famous at the university, attracting lots of attentions. I had hundreds of fans, and she was one of them. She never missed any of my live shows, always encouraging me, tipping me. We used to talk about the future. I promised her that one day I would become an international superstar, and she also supported my dream, cheered me on. But things don't always go as planned. Although I always exaggerated saying it's because no bull recognized my talent, deep down I also knew it was due to my lack of ability. Later, the viewer traffic of the live streaming dropped more and more, so I simply gave up live streaming, abandoned my dream. After graduating from college, just idled away my time at various bars. On one hand, I kept telling myself, it's not because I didn't want to work hard, but because I was a pauper without money to further improve my music level. On the other hand, I knew that was just an excuse I found for myself. After I stopped live streaming, as Mirror still kept sending me private massages frequently, that kind of concern always made me feel my burden was heavier. I just wanted to hide, and as time went by, I was scared to open that app. The last private message read, you should think clearly about what you want and what you can give. I still believe in your promise. I was in a daze, in an instant, I felt those hits seemed to have become my motivation. It seems like they crushed my past confusion underfoot. At that moment, I felt as if I had a flash of inspiration, understanding lots of things. She was correct. I cheered up, tittied myself, went to take classes during the day, come night. I would start the live streaming, continue to let my music spread wider and further. Just about to end the streaming, I suddenly received a gift of 5,300 from Mesmir. Her request was for me to stream Lev every night this month. If I broadcast every night, I won't be able to perform at bars, I thought for a moment and agreed. Then she DM'd me a picture. It was a newly published recruitment scheme. Goose Video collaborating with Staryu Entertainment's singer-songwriter training camp will start recruitment half a year later. This is the variety show that Goose is promoting this year. It yields high-performance idols. It's certain to produce a batch of dazzling newcomers and singer-songwriters are one of the most popular kind. I feel my eyes suddenly brighten. My heart couldn't help but leap. At the same time, I am surprised that this seems to be internal news, yet to be released to the public. I quickly asked her where did she get such news. But, she's already gone offline. The gray avatar only left a sentence. You should have a broader world, George. 
Don't waste your talent. The income from the live stream is increasing, but I still only live on instant noodles. I try to spend all of my income on improving my music skills. Time flies. Half a year later, I applied for the singer-songwriter training camp, entered into the variety show production team very quickly, with the inspirational compositions created when being Willow's driver for a month and the effort of six months. I was able to break through and smoothly settle into the top 10 of the whole competition. During this time, except for recording the program, the rest of my time was all used to write songs, seek advice, and practice. I took a leave in my live stream, and those fans were very supportive, because with the broadcasting of the programs, I quickly captured a lot of fans. The online popularity is very high. Even there were many speculations. Thinking I'm the favorite to win, my old fans were crying with Joe, sending messages to me, saying the unpopular singer they've been following for three to four years was finally going to become popular. I was very happy, but in my free time, I would always look at the old private messages that his mirror sent to me, those cares that I never responded to. I also developed a habit of messaging her every day. Today I made it into the top 10. I will definitely win the crown. Hope you can come and watch Lev by then. I'll be waiting for you. But as Mirror's avatar has always been grey, never to shine again, at this moment I finally understood her past feelings and sent several apologies to her. Before success arise, I dare not stop, dare not rest, I have to work hard and seize this opportunity, because I know, this is my only chance to catch up with Willow. I made a decision in my heart, the day I win and debut, I am going to confess my feelings to her. When I can finally stand at the height where she's at, being in the same world as her, becoming a man that can match her, I will tell her my feelings with confidence. The competition quickly entered an intense stage during rehearsal time. When I was working with the band on the accompaniment, there was a slight disturbance on the scene. The general director was accompanying a man with a tall figure. Wherever he went, he attracts the eyes of all the girls. Wow, he's so handsome. Is he an artist too? No, he's the boss of Hecky Capital, our financial backer. That makes sense. I was wondering why he's got such a good temperament. I was surprised to see Makoto. Why was he here? Financial backer. Could it be that this program was co-invested by their company? While I was in shock, the general director had already brought him over. This is George. He's very popular online. A popular contestant. Makoto looked at me with a smirk. Really? At this time, the producer suddenly pulled the director general to the side for a talk, leaving us to behind. Do you really think Willow could ever like you? Driver George, he scoffed. Or are you naive enough to think that you can actually stand out and become a popular singer? I shrugged my shoulders. Whether Willow might like me or not, I do not know, but I am certain that she definitely would not like you. His face darkened. Don't think I do not know about your disgusting moves that day. She only let you stay overnight out of pity. Don't think you're something. At least I stayed overnight and she personally cooked breakfast for me, I pecked at his sore spot. Sure enough, this sentence irritated him hugely. He was about to blow up when the general director hurried back. Boss Makoto, our director is also here. Let's go over now. He suppressed the resentment in his eyes, turned to the general director with a fake smile. We all put high hopes on this program. The chosen artists must be both morally and professionally competent. If someone shows a lack of morality and has bad conduct, the higher they climb in the future, the harder they will fall. Furthermore, immoral artists can also cause immeasurable losses to our company. After saying this, he glanced at me meaningfully in front of everyone, then turned around and left, leaving behind everyone in the room looking at me with different expressions. That night, I was assigned to the worst and most remote dormitory. The song practice room and script room will only be available to me after all other contestants have finished using them. In this way, both my practice and creation time were greatly reduced. In such a fierce competition, if you don't advance, you regress. I couldn't help but get anxious and wanted to talk to the general director, but I heard the conversation inside from outside the director's room. Director, I can't do anything about it. He's offended people, general director, but George is very talented. Go and see for yourself, among those guys in the company who are eager to stand out, who doesn't have talent. Who doesn't have the ability, but what use is talent? Capital is the king. There's a strong clamor for him to be the winner. If he's eliminated, our show might be criticized for being unfair. Don't make it so obvious. 
let him make it to the finals. In the final top five, who is weaker than who? He doesn't even have the equipment to practice songs now, so it's very normal if he can't compete. Finishing fourth, it's a pity. Fans can't say much. The general director sighed. I understand. It's just a pity. The producer laughed. There's nothing to pity. The music industry won't miss one singer, but we can't lose Hiche as the investor. The final of the conference was a live broadcast. The ranking will be decided by the audience's votes. With no additional support, I could only rely on myself. As long as I could present a sufficiently shocking work, I did not believe that I could not break through the obstacles that they had set up. I wanted Willow to see me, to see me on the stage. On the day of the final, they invited the most popular goddess in the entertainment world, Yue, to sit on the spot. This brought a large number of fans pouring into the broadcast channel. According to the previous results, I was the last one to perform. After the performance of the first tour was over, the atmosphere on the site had almost reached its peak. The benefit of being the final act is that the venue is completely heated up. The bad thing is that, if I can't take over this atmosphere, I will be completely out of the competition. I stood on the completely dark stage, taking a deep breath with my eyes closed, waiting for the moment when all the lights would light up. I decided to give up the song originally prepared for the final. After hearing the conversation between the director and the supervisor that day, I made up my mind that I would say what I wanted to say to them in the final round. For everyone to hear, talent will never be completely suppressed. Effort will eventually bear fruit, being exploited, being stepped on, struggling at the bottom. But the spine in the vitality of life will never bend. I used augmented fourth chords for the main melody. This tune can make the whole song's atmosphere become thicker and texture, creating an emotional memory point and resonance. The band in the place was very professional, the harmonies they gave kept switching between harmony and discord, subtly pushing the progress of the music. The program group won't interfere in this, it would affect the broadcasting effect, they would be the ones to embarrass themselves. So I believed the band would bring out the most professional live performance. Before the chorus starts, the major string chords were laying a foundation, upraised by the brass to break through, followed by a single drum beat. Pushing the atmosphere on the spot to its climax, the chorus kicked in. A compelling hug tugged at the heartstrings of the audience. This song of protest and accusation against exploitation spoke to the hearts of every salaryman, making the atmosphere on the site heated up. Even after the entire performance, the audience was still clapping and screaming like mad. When the stage lights lit up again, Goddess Yue couldn't control her excitement. She stood up and shouted towards the stage. I was so nervous, I felt like my soul was going to leave my body. I smiled, catching my breath, calming my emotions. At that moment, I didn't know that my son had made the play count of the program break a hundred million. Also didn't expect that this would become my representative work, my crowning song, praised by the ACG culture as the battle song of hashtag CHUUN IPOCALIPSS. But I quite like it, the judge excitedly praised, George, I really didn't expect that you'd sing such a majestic song. I feel like you're a warrior fighting for life after being trapped, running forward without any hesitation, fighting for all the things worthwhile in life, fighting against all odds, only seeking a life and death battle. My chuny soul was made to cry by your singing, the entire audience was made to laugh. After a series of pleasantries and interactivity from the host, it finally came to the time to announce the voting results. Although I was nervous, I felt calm, because I knew that I had done everything I could. So when at last, the host announced my name, when all the applause, flowers, and fireworks all came rushing towards me, I was nearly speechless. While everyone was hugging me and enthusiastically congratulating me, my eyes saw through the crowd, and I spotted the figure of Willow, standing amidst the crowd, just a fleeting glimpse, then obstructed from view. When I hurriedly looked back, there was nothing. Was it an illusion? This thought flashed through my mind. And then I was pulled back into reality. After the show, I left the venue hastily, rushing towards Willow's house. Tanting heavily from running around the large housing estate, I stopped in front of her building. My heart pounded uncontrollably. But then I saw the lights under the gross illumination. They were standing face to face. Their gentle silhouettes under the evening light made me feel uneasy. She smiled at him turned to leave, but he grasped her hand. Pulling her abruptly into his arms, my heart ached, and I quickly turned my body to hide myself in the shadows, pressing my back against the wall. 
feeling as if I cannot breathe, my hands were hanging weakly, and my sight landed on the trophy in my hand. In this moment, I realized everything I've done was unnecessary, I'm truly superfluous. I closed my eyes, holding back my tears and left the neighborhood in disarray. A Maybach stopped on the side of the road. The driver rolled down the window and yelled. Nephew. I was about to curse. Who's taking advantage of me? I took a closer look and answered honestly. Uncle. Why are you here? I just dropped Ms. Liu home, he said. Coming over. Where did she go so late? She went to see your performance. Didn't you know? I was taken aback. So she really was there. Yay. You're a superstar now. Remember to take your uncle with you. I can be your driver. You left. Willow has no driver. He suddenly sighed. Willow quit her job. I was taken aback. When? Why? Just tonight. After leaving the program venue, she called boss Makoto in the car, said the resignation letter has already been sent to his mailbox. Makoto immediately came to find her. I just saw him rushing into the community. Only about 10 minutes before you. My chaotic brain suddenly flashed. That day, in the bar she said something. She said, as long as she is at the company, she would not develop any other relationship with Makoto. I smiled sarcastically. So, did she quit for Makoto? John Chen hesitated for a moment and stammered. Actually, uncle has something he didn't tell you. It wasn't me who recommended you to be Willow's driver. It was Willow herself who requested it, letting me recommended you. I watched his mouth opening and closing, but I couldn't understand a word he said. Hold on, hold on. What are you talking about? She actively requested. How did she know me? Yes, I found it strange too. I asked her. And she said that she's your fan. For three years. He patted my shoulder. I did not believe a word at that time. But today I saw your performance. Uncle believed it. Don't blame me. I just wanted to take credit in front of you. Didn't you say you wanted to buy some music equipment but couldn't afford it? This is such a good job opportunity. I was blown away by this news. I suddenly understood everything. I jumped up abruptly and ran into the community frantically. It turns out. It was never me chasing her, but her waiting for me, but her waiting for me when I returned. Only she was standing alone under the street light, panting. I took one step at a time towards her. Makoto has left, I asked. She suddenly frowned. You saw it? Makoto knew that I was going to resign and he wanted to dissuade me. But I knew what he did and I couldn't approve of his character, so I decided not to work with him anymore. He got a little excited after hearing that, so he hugged me. But you don't have to worry, I already handled it. This is the first time she has explained so much, so clearly to me and asked. And what resentment could I still be harboring? It was being steadily filled by Joe. So you went on site to ensure the accuracy of the data. As long as you were on behalf of the company, they didn't dare to mess around. She laughed, kind-hearted. This is what you deserve, Willow. I just wanted to show it to you alone. I saw it. She looked at me. I saw it three years ago. When I first returned to the country and joined the company, the first external activity I participated in was the completion of a new teaching building at the Music Institute. The building was financed by our company, so I represented them at the celebration. You were a guest performer and sang a song on stage. She gently hummed it out. I still remember the melody of that song. I like it very much. So after that, I've been following your new songs. I woke up as if from a dream. I remembered the event she talked about. At that time, I was the champion of the top 10 campus singers, so whenever the school had activities, they would ask me to perform. I remembered that the event was quite grand. But what I didn't know was that she was sitting down there all this time, looking up at me on stage. So, you were as mirror, aren't you? She nodded with a smile. But I still don't understand a little bit. If you wanted to help me, you could have simply referred me to an entertainment company. Why go around such a big circle and through my uncle to let me be your driver? She suddenly seemed a little embarrassed. The girls in the entertainment company, young, beautiful, and cute. My heart was about to leap out of my chest. Could she possibly be jealous? I didn't want to take the risk and create so many competitors for myself. She lowered her eyes. I'm much older than you. In fact, I wasn't confident that you would like me. I like you. I blurted out, but I was incredibly serious. She was stunned for a moment, then laughed. George, my new company is launching tomorrow. I still lack a driver to pick me up and drop me home every day. 
the reward is. She pointed to her home, the right to live in this house. Her voice was a little shaky. Would you accept? I shook my head. Not enough. Then in her surprised eyes, I lowered my head and kissed her. Only this will do.